Hi everyone, in this video we're going to learn about how to solve equations with indices. As always, there are some exam questions in the video's description that you can try afterwards. Before we begin getting into this topic, we're going to do a quick reminder of the rules you should have learned at GCSE. Let's start with the multiplication law. Imagine you had 2 to the power 5, and you multiply it by 2 to the power 6. For a question like this, you just add the powers, so 5 add 6 is 11, so the answer is 2 to the power 11. You've also got the division rule, so 2 to the 12, divide by 2 to the 3, and in this case you subtract the powers, so 12 take away 3 is 9, so the answer is 2 to the power 9. Next up we have the bracket to the power law. So imagine we take 2 to the power 6, and we put that in a bracket and raise it to the power 3. In this example you just multiply the powers, so 6 times 3 is 18, so this is the same as 2 to the power 18. Sometimes the bracket to the power law could be written like this, in this one you have to raise the 2 to the power 3 and the x to the 5 to the power 3. So we start by doing 2 to the power 3 and then we multiply this by x to the 5 to the power 3 but we just learnt you multiply the powers for this so 5 times 3 is 15. You can simplify 2 to the power 3, that's 2 times 2 times 2 which is 8, so we end up with 8x to the power 15. Sometimes you have fractional indices like this. The number on the bottom will always tell you the root that you're going to do, so in this case it's the cube root, and the number on the top then tells you what power to raise that to, so in this case squared. So this is the same as the cube root of x, all squared, or you could do this in either order, you could start by squaring, so x squared, and then cube root that, so the cube root of x squared. Sometimes one of these may be more useful than the other, depending on the question you're doing. And finally, what if we have a negative index, so x to the power negative 3, well in this case we take the reciprocal, so we do 1 over x to the power positive 3. Now let's try some questions. We'll start with this question here. So we have 27x squared all raised to the power 1 third equals 75. So we're trying to solve this to find a value of x. The first thing I notice is we have a bracket to the power 1 third, so we can use the bracket to the power law. So remember, we raise the 27 to the power 1 third, and for the x squared we will multiply the powers, so 2 times 1 third is 2 thirds. So we have x to the power 2 thirds, and this equals 75. Now if we look at the 27 to the power 1 third, this just means the cube root of 27, and the cube root of 27 is 3. So we can replace this with a 3, so we have 3x to the power 2 thirds equals 75. We can now divide both sides by 3. If we divide the left by 3, then that 3 disappears, so we end up with x to the power 2 thirds, and 75 divided by 3 is 25. Now remember when we have indices with fractions we can rewrite this as a root and then to a power. So this is the same as the cube root of x squared equals 25. Now to remove the squared we can square root both sides. If you square root the left hand side the squared will disappear so we just get the cube root of x. And if you square root the right hand side, remember we need to take both the positive and negative root, we get plus or minus 5. Finally, we have a cube root of x on the left. To remove that cube root, we can cube both sides. If you cube the left-hand side, then you cube a cube root, which means we're just left with x. And for the right-hand side, we need to do plus or minus 5 cubed, so we end up with plus or minus 125. So we end up with two solutions for this equation. We've got x equals 125, and also x equals negative 125. Now we'll try this question. This question is a little bit more difficult, notice that x is actually in amongst the powers. I also spot in this question that we have lots of powers of 5. So we have 5, we also have 25 which is 5 squared, and 125 which is 5 cubed. So the approach for this type of question is to try and write all of the parts as powers of 5. So if we start with the first bit here, 5x to the power x. This is a bracket raised to the power, so I can just multiply the powers. So I need to do x times x, which is x squared, so this is 5 to the power x squared. For the next bit here, we've got 25, but we know 25 is 5 squared, so we can actually introduce a bracket. So this is the same as 5 squared raised to the power 2x. And for the final bit here, we've got 1 over 125. We know 125 is 5 cubed, but since it's the reciprocal, this is 5 to the power negative 3. So we've got 5 to the power x squared, and for this part here, we can use the bracket to the power law, so we multiply those indices, so we need to do 2 times 2x, which is 4x. So this is 5 to the power 4x, equals 5 to the power negative 3. 
We can now look at this part here and use the multiplication rule. This says we add the indices. So this is the same as 5 to the power x squared plus 4x. And this equals 5 to the power negative 3. Now we've written both sides as a single power of 5. We can just compare the indices. So x squared plus 4x here must be the same as negative 3. So we can write an equation, x squared plus 4x equals negative 3. We just need to solve this. Now if you add 3 to both sides, you end up with x squared plus 4x plus 3 equals 0, and this is just a quadratic equation. Fortunately, this one factorizes, it's x plus 1, x plus 3 equals 0, and this gives you two solutions. So x equals negative 1, and we've also got x equals negative 3. And now we have another question where x is in amongst the powers. And notice again, there are a few powers of 5 here. We've got 25, a 5, and a 5. There's also 120. That doesn't look like a power of 5, but something really interesting will happen with that during this question. So let's start with the 25 to the power 4x. That's the same as 5 squared to the power 4x. Now on the right hand side, we'll start with the top of the fraction here, and we'll look at the 5 to the 59 minus the 5 to the 57. So this is a lot of powers of 5. It's 5 times 5 times 5 times 5, 59 times, and then take away 5 times 5 times 5, 57 times. So you can actually factorize this. You can take out 57 of those 5s. So 5 to the power 57, and then we just need to work out what would go in the brackets. So to get 5 to the power 59, I just need two more 5s, so 5 squared, and I've already got 5 to the 57, so it's just minus 1. So we factorize the top and leave the bottom as 120. Now, if we look at the left-hand side, we've got 5 squared to the power 4x. We can use that bracket to the power law. So if you multiply 2 and 4x, we get 8x, so it's 5 to the power 8x. And on the right-hand side, we're going to focus on this bracket here. So we're going to write everything else the same on the fraction, but just tidy up this bracket. Now you should know 5 squared, that's 25, and then take away 1, that's 24. So this bracket is just 24. Now if you look at the 24 and the 120 as just a fraction, so 24 over 120, this would actually simplify. 24 is a common factor of both of them, so it would simplify to 1 fifth. So we have 1 over 5. So we can rewrite the right hand side much nicer. It's 5 to the 8x on the left, and the right hand side is 5 to the 57, and then it's just times a fifth, or divide by 5. We can now simplify the right-hand side a little bit, so we've got 5 to the 57 divided by 5, or 5 to the power 1, and we subtract those indices, so that equals 5 to the power 56, so we have 5 to the 8x equals 5 to the 56. Now we've written them as single powers of 5, so we have 8x equals 56. So let's write that equation, and this solves really easily by dividing by 8 on both sides, so x equals 7. And now we're going to look at the final type of question you need to be able to do for this course. So we have an equation here that we need to solve, and we're told it's for x is greater than 0. It looks a little bit like it's a quadratic equation. In fact, it is a quadratic equation, but just in disguise. We need to do some clever manipulation, and then it will turn into one. In past exam questions, it's very common for them to tell you what to do to manipulate this. So, what they would say is multiply both sides of this equation by x to the power 1 half. Now, if you multiply the left-hand side by x to the power 1 half, we'll start with x to the 3 over 2. Remember, when you multiply, you add the indices. So 3 over 2 plus 1 half is 4 over 2. So we get x to the 4 over 2. And then moving on to the next term, we need to add those indices as well. So we've got negative 1 half plus 1 half, which is 0. So we get minus 20x to the power 0. And for the right-hand side, we need to add 1 half to 1 half. So we get 8x to the power 2 halves. Now there's some simplifying that can be done here. 4 over 2 is just 2, so this is x squared. And x to the power 0 is 1, so we have negative 20 times 1, which is just negative 20, so we can lose the x to the power 0 completely. And then 2 divided by 2 is 1, so this is x to the power 1, but we don't usually write the 1, so it's just 8x. Now if we just subtract 8x from both sides, we get x squared minus 20 minus 8x equals 0. And if we just jiggle this about a bit, it turns into a quadratic equation. You can solve this one by factorizing. It's x plus 2, x take 10 equals 0, which gives us two solutions, x equals negative 2, and also x equals 10. Now you have to be really careful for this question. Up in the top right here, it said 4x is greater than 0. And there is a really good reason for this. 
you have to remember that something to the power half is the same as the square root. So for this x to the power half here, that's the same as the square root of x. Now you can't square root a negative number, so our solutions can't be negative. So what we need to do is look at our solutions, and we had a negative solution, negative 2, and we remove that solution, and we just keep the positive solution, x equals 10. Now we have another question, a bit similar to the last one to try. So this time we're going to times by x to the power 1 third instead of x to the power 1 half. If you look at all of the indices in the question, you can see the denominator is always 3, and that's a big giveaway to what you need to multiply by. So if we start with x to the power 5 over 3 times x to the third, we do 5 over 3 plus 1 third, which is 6 over 3. And then moving on, we've got 3x to the power 2 thirds, and then we multiply this by x to the third, so we add 2 thirds and 1 third, so we get 3x to the power 3 over 3. And finally, we do 10x to the power negative 1 third times x to the third, so we do negative a third, add a third, which is 0, so 10x to the power 0. Again, this simplifies really nicely, so if we do 6 divided by 3, we get 2, and 3 divided by 3, we get 1, but we never really write the power 1, and x to the power 0 is 1, so it's just 10. So we now have a quadratic equation, let's subtract 10 from both sides. So x squared plus 3x, take away 10 equals 0. And now factorising this one gives you x plus 5, x minus 2 equals 0, which gives you two solutions, x equals negative 5, and x equals positive 2. Now at this point you might be thinking, we need to lose that negative 5 solution, however in this one you don't. If we look at the indices for this question, we had 3 on the bottom, so if we look at x to the power 2 thirds up here, that's the same as the cube root of x squared. Now you can cube root any number, so the negative values are absolutely fine, it's when you have a square root that you can't square root negatives, so you need to lose those solutions. And also in this question I didn't say for x is greater than 0. So in this case, both of them are fine, x equals negative 5 and x equals positive 2. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Remember there are exam questions in the video's description that you can go and try now. Check out what I think you should watch next, and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos.